Hello students. Welcome to Modern Management Technique class. I'm Professor Namrita Hampiori from Department of Commerce and Accountancy, KLS GCC Belgami. We are dealing with the second unit that is management functions. In our previous video, like lecture video, we have completed with the first function of the management that is planning wherein we have learned about the meaning of planning and importance of planning and types of planning. Today, coming to the second function of management, which is organizing. So in the first stage of the management function, we have decided what to be done. That is, we have planned something for our future. So we have decided here we as a management have decided what to be done. So in the second step, we are going to decide how are we going to reach that particular objective. So in the first step, we have already set the objective. In the second step, how and who uh, are going to complete or accomplish this task. So organizing is going to help us to solve this problem of who should do it and how it should be done. So the, by the name itself, organizing, that means here organizing something systematically or collecting the information or the resources, whatever is necessary and allocating it at the proper time and at the proper position is called here as something organizing. So in other words here, organizing can be defined as a process that initiates implementation of the plans by clarifying job and working relationship and effectively deploying resources for attainment of the identified and desired results. Organizing essentially implies a process which coordinate human efforts, assemble resources and integrate both into unified whole to be utilized for achieving objectives. So yes, so organization is the next step wherein the whatever we have planned in the previous step that we are going to implement. That is our thoughts are going to implement. That is you are bringing uh, the thoughts into the reality. So to bring into that reality we require certain resources. So those resources may be human resources that is manpower, money, right, material, okay. So these are the resources which are required. So these, res uh, these resources are brought together, not only bringing it together, but they should work with the proper coordination. That is, there are efforts from each of the resources or with the efforts of organizing or with the efforts of all these resources, one can, one can be successful in a proper organizing. So bringing all the resources together and working on it is nothing but your organizing. So here organizing function leads to the creation of organization structure. That is it builds a proper framework wherein all the required resources are being brought at a place and they work with the proper coordination that includes designing of the job roles. To be filled by the suitable skilled person that is who is suitable for that particular job and the skilled person is brought for that particular job and the, it defines the interrelationship between those rules so that they can perform their duties and duties and they can reach their goal. So here bringing all the resources together and placing them at a suitable position and working with the proper coordination is nothing but your organizing. So this was the meaning or the concept of organizing. Next, let us look into the principles of organizing. So what are principles here? So principles are the set of rules or the beliefs we can say that upon which we are going to work or these are the foundation which uh, that these are the foundation on which we are going to work. So the principles of organizing are classified as the work specialization, authority, chain of command, delegation and span of control. 
So these are the five principles of organizing. Let us look them one by one. The first principle says here that is work specialization. That means your division of labor. So your work specialization means what here? Allocating the work to that person in which he is specialized or he is skilled or he is having a good knowledge or he is experienced. So allocating that work to that particular person will give you the good effective results. So here, uh, a division that is a work specialization is a degree to which organizational tasks are divided into the separate jobs. So here, the work are divided, right? So when you are working to reach a particular goal, you can't handle, the one person cannot handle the entire work. You have to divide the work into the certain part or you have to split the work and each work should be allocated with a proper person. So here that means here nothing but work specialization. So each employee will be trained to perform that particular task. So that he should be specialized in that particular work and you will get a good result as a result of a speciality or as, as that person is skilled or experienced, obviously you are going to get a good result. Then next here is authority, right? So here, authority is a power which is assigned to the manager to make a decision, issue orders and allocate the resources on behalf of organizations to achieve the objectives. So, as we have studied about the levels of management, there are top level, middle, uh, middle level, and at uh, like uh, top level, bottom, uh, sorry, top level, middle level, and the operational level, right? So, these are the, uh, like at every stage, they have their own role, right? So, at the top level, with the, they are involved in making the rules and policies, right? And at, at the middle level, they have here the responsibility which is taken up by the top management to fulfill the, that is, uh, they, have, they have taken up the responsibility so that they could accomplish whatever the rule, whatever the objective set by the top level management by following the rules and regulation. And at the bottom level, that is at the, uh, at the last level, wherein they imply, they take the responsibility from the middle level management. So at each level, they have their own responsibilities. So here, the authority is given to the manager. He is a person, one who look after or one who is a connection between the bottom line level and the top line uh, top management. He is a one who has been given the authority of taking the decisions. He is one who is going to issue the orders and allocate the resources on behalf of the top management. So here, uh, he, the authority here follows from up to down. That is, roles or the position at the top of the hierarchy are vested with the more formal authority than the position at the bottoms. So here the authority uh, will work within the framework of the organization structure and it is essentially the roles of the manager. So here authority is usually given at, in the hands of the managers. Then coming to the next principle here is chain of command. So the chain here itself means that there is a link, right? So in organization at the every level, you must have some link to reach at the particular point. So here it is an unbroken line of authority that will link every individual to the top organizational position through the managerial position at each successive layer in between. That is, if any worker, okay, at the lower level management wants to convey something to the top level management. So, as you have built a certain line of communication or the certain line of authority, he cannot directly communicate with the top level management. He have to go through his superior. That is, he have to inform to his immediate superior. He will be informing to the manager. Then manager will intimate that to the uh, top level management. So this is how the chain will be passed. In this way, there is like there is no miscommunication or there is a no 
break wherein he can approach the top level management that is he will be like his message will be passed to the top level authority so here it is effective a uh, communicate business tool to maintain the order and assign accountability even in the most casual working environment so here in the chain of command here a chain of command is established so that everyone knows whom they should report to and what are his responsibility expected at each level so here they at the each level you have your immediate boss or you can say that you have your immediate uh, superior to whom you have to report that is at every level you have someone from whom you will get the work that is at the every level managers will assign the some work and get it done so here the chain of command enforces the responsibility and accountability right so it follows the two basic principles of unity of command and scalar principle in unity of command states that whom they should report that is one person one employee whom he should report either to his manager or superior or any reporting authority to whom he is directly accountable to so your accountable means what here he have to be he have to be justifiable or he have to give a clarification for the work what he has done and scalar principle state that there should exist a clear line of the authority that is there must be clear link there there must be a proper link there shouldn't be any uh, miscommunication or the cross connections which causes the confusions in the mind of the employee so there should be a proper flow of the uh, work uh, there should be a proper flow of the work then coming to the delegation so here delegation in simple words we can say that it is assigning the work right so here being a manager he uh, he is not as he is not uh, specialized in all the work he will get it done through the other people who are specialized here so being a manager he is very smart at allocating the work but that allocation of the work should be in the proper hands so here it is a practice of turning over the work related task and the authority to the employees or the subordinates that is it is passing the work or assigning the work so here without this uh, delegation manager can't do all the work himself right that becomes again the under utilization of the workers here by doing all the work it is not possible for the manager to handle the entire task or it is not possible for him to do all the work so here he passes on that work to his employee so it it involves the establishment of uh, outcomes expected outcomes task assignments delegation of authority for accomplishing this task and extraction of responsibilities for this accomplishment so delegation will lead to the empowerment as the employee have the freedom to contribute ideas and do their jobs in the best possible way so here when M, uh, when a manager give a work or assign some work to his to his employees employees will get an opportunity to contribute towards that particular work so here they will be given a freedom to express their views as to contribute their ideas when that freedom is given in the uh, in the working environment to the employees employees will tend to contribute that is they put their 100% percent efficient they, they put their 100% percent in that particular work so this will make a, or create a healthy environment in our organization coming to the last principle here is span of control here the span of control refers to the number of employees who report to one manager that is one manager is handling how many employees span of control states that one manager under him how many people or how many employees are working so it is a number of direct reports that a manager has and whose result is accountable so he is responsible for those uh, employees who are reporting near him so they are divided into the wide and the narrow span so here wide span means here they consist the the span control exists when the manager has a large number of the employees who is reporting to him and narrow means when there are only few employees who uh, who are reporting to him 
so here they uh, report that uh, they here give the report of the work which they have completed or the work or the task which is assigned by the manager here so these were the five principles of the organizing so i hope you are clear with the today's class so in the next class we will be dealing with the theories of organization